What's happening? What's happening? What's happening, everybody? This is Jay Mullane, also known as Wise, and welcome to Wise. It's going live at five. Wow, this is going to be a exciting episode today. I got one of my brothers, man, that I met online. You know what? On Clubhouse, this brother is amazing. He's an author, man, a poet, man, and you know, so what? He got so many other skills we won't get into with the show today. But before we get to our guests, um, I just want to make sure and introduce myself again. My name is Jay Mullane, also known as Wise. I am a technology consultant for a major, major company in corporate America. Also, I am the CEO of Wise Trust Media. What we do is, in the creative style, integrate technology to make your business more efficient as well. So, we're two happy days, but it's all good because we want to be productive in this environment. So we are so thankful to be here, man. And man, this I cannot believe this journey. Why is this going live at five, right? So um, we're about to go into our guest and speak with him. So after the intro, we'll go ahead and get started. <music> Hey, what's going on, my brother? My brother, Terrence P. Elmore from the Brown Sugar Cafe is in the house today. What's going on with you, brother? Oh, Wise, what's going on, man? Everything is good, man. Everything is good. How are you? Uh, I'm doing good, man. I can't complain, man. Even better, man. So I got a chance to see you, man, live in a little in living color. <laughs> yeah, man. I, I, I love what you got going on here. Last yeah, time when you were on my podcast, we talked a little yes. bit about this and Man, you making it happen. You got video and all. Oh, yeah, man. Oh, man, man. You know, I've learned from the master. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Though you don't know, you do not know, this man right here is a podcaster as well, and I learned so much from him. And like you mentioned before, my first interview was with Terrence from the Brown Sugar Cafe, and I was so amazed of how you did the intro, how you did the setup. And, you know, um, look at me now, you know, what, seven months later, I didn't yeah. jump on immediately, but seven months later, I'm doing it right now, and I'm um, doing the, you know, the feel, the vibe, and, man, it's so amazing to be with you, brother, and learning more about you. But before, you know, we're going to deep dive in some stuff, but what we want to do is get the people to know you. So introduce yourself. Tell the people who is Terrence P. Elmore. Ah, uh, man, um. Terrence P. Elmore, I am a husband, writer, poet, author, podcast host, um, barbecue enthusiast, pit master, whatever you want to call it. Um, you know, and I'm just here trying to do my part to, to spread love in a world that seems to be full of hate. I know that's right, man. And you're doing your part, man. And man, um, wow. So the Brown Sugar Cafe, where do you get that name from? What inspired you to actually call your podcast and I guess your brand, the Brown Sugar Cafe? Okay, so my first book, um, Love Letters, when I decided to put that out there and, and publish it, I didn't have like um, anything as far as my poetry out there. Nobody really knew I wrote poems, so... I needed something to kind of get the, the the buzz going that I would have poetry coming out. So I created a blog and I was like, I wanted to call it something cool. I didn't want to just, you know, call it my name. So I was thinking of something cool and I was like, like maybe like a cafe, someplace you come in and sip coffee or tea and listen to some poetry. So I was like, you know, the, the brown sugar cafe because it sounds smooth. So I was like, OK, the brown sugar cafe. So I started my blog started posting poems every wednesday and it just over a couple of years it grew into an idea for a podcast uh, i want to kind of put a voice to some of my my poetry and not only my poetry i started doing like little blogs here and there so i was like the idea was to create a blog outside of my poems every wednesday and then have a podcast episode just further discussing what the blog was well over time i kind of stopped writing the blog and just started doing podcast episode after podcast episode and so that's kind of where the, the brand so to speak came from it was just a thought like what would be a cool place to come in and sit down and just enjoy 
Oh man, oh man! You said from the first book, Le- "Love Letters." That's the yeah, name of the book? yeah. Love okay. letter, Love Letters, a collection of poems. Love, okay, what inspired you to write that first book and give it that title? Well, um, I'm trying to let's see. Well, I'll give you the long version. We got time, so oh, yeah. <laughs> so um, my wife and I were friends at the time, and we were talking about poems because I've always been writing poetry. But like I said, it was nothing that I really discussed with anybody. And so I was at this time where I kind of stopped writing poems out. Like I always had poems going in my mind. But for whatever reason, I wasn't really writing them down in my book anymore or, you know, kind of getting them out on paper. And I told her about it and she was like, oh, okay, cool. And then we talked another time and she was like, you know, uh, when the last time you wrote a poem? And I was like, I got one you know, worked out in my head right now. And she was like, oh, that's a good place for it. And so I was like, oh, okay. So I went and finished the whole thing. And at that moment, I was like, man, I need to keep going. And so I had this this idea because the poem is called She and it's it's a dedication to music. But the way I wrote it, it kind of sounds like kind of like kind of like a common. I used to love her like that that old the hip hop so it was like that type of vibe and so i wanted to do like a collection of poems that kind of went from maybe like birth to childhood the teenage years the young adulthood and on through so i was like maybe 10 poems and so when i started writing some more it developed into something different and so i wanted it to be more than just 10 poems and i wanted to have like a story you know, to kind of shape and tell like stories about love and kind of become like love letters. And the reason why I took that avenue is because I felt like there wasn't enough positive things when it came to love and when it came to things that we see on TV, social media and reality TV, as far as like relationships were concerned. So I wanted to have something positive in there and it just grew into this collection of poems. That were dedicated to love so each poem in that book has something dedicated to love to inspire people to believe in love again to inspire people to believe in love for the first time to show people that love isn't hurt and it isn't all this pain and suffering and stuff that people like to associate love with because one of the things i find interesting is that whenever i have a conversation with somebody about love and then they say it's painful and all this hurt they always give me an example of a person and I'm like that, that person hurt you, not love. It was somebody misrepresenting love. It was somebody mishandling love that hurt you. So you can't blame love on how you, how you feel. So that's where that idea came from. And I just, like I said, I just, I just put it out there and and the reception was amazing. I didn't realize that it would have the effect that it did because I was getting people sending me messages and telling me that, that book helped them believe in love again and see a, a positive spin because for one, that's not something that we as men really talk about. And so it was refreshing to see uh, a man talk about love and, and expression of love. Wow. And it definitely is, man, you know, coming from, you know, a vomit, um, you know, me, you know, working on my book where, you know, I mentioned that on your podcast and growing up and not actually seeing that, you know as you play it out and um you know as far as relationship and true what you call um not always pain but also expressing love mm-hmm. so pulling a book together a poetry that reflects love is very important and be able to share those thoughts and ideas with the others is so beautiful and you being the man taking lead and taking charge of that is also beautiful like you say work along with your wonderful wife and how long have you been married to your wife brother Oh, we just celebrated five years. Five years, five yeah. years. So you were dating in the process and you came up with this concept of, oh, let me do this and write a book based off of that and led into what you call it now. Uh, we, you express love to the Brown Sugar Cafe. And it's so amazing, man, that how, just like I said, I thought an idea, how it manifested in writing. So mm-hmm. um, what's your thought process when it comes to writing? Oh, man. Uh it varies like the brown sugar cafe first started off with love and then i started getting more into 
motivational and, and inspirational stuff to kind of help people push past because I, I put my blogs out my poetry blogs out every wednesday so it's kind of like a midweek thing to kind of help push past through the week and so i mean i could just be sitting there thinking about anything and then or watching a movie or hearing a song and i'm just you know because i'm always thinking i'm always thinking just always have stuff running through my mind and so i have a thought like okay this is something that I saw or I heard somebody talking about. How can I develop a poem out of that to kind of give somebody some light at the end of the tunnel? And so when it comes to those sort of things, that's where those come from. But like my other poems that aren't necessarily related to those sort of things, it's just like music, um, different things, you know, I, I see. And my main thing with the poems that I share is I'm trying to shed some light on positivity to anybody who reads it some sort of hope some sort of you know some inspiration because it's been a lot of things that's happened for everybody the last couple of years and um a lot of people especially with the pandemic saw a side of themselves that they probably thought they got rid of or didn't know existed and so especially during that time i really felt a push to you know hey you can have positive thoughts like things happen things get you down but you know there's light at the end of the tunnel that's true it is light at the end of the tunnel one thing um and we're gonna ask this question too i'm gonna ask you this question but one thing that stuck out for me is is like you said the light at the end of the tunnel and how you process you see things even in music you did um on your instagram um you post something that said but less forever and you and Tyler that you actually explained it in Clubhouse, but those who are not in Clubhouse, explain what you mean by blessed forever. Okay, so uh, a couple of years ago, Rick Ross had this, I think it was a mixtape and it was called Rich Forever. And the whole theme of it was being rich forever. And I instantly had the thought, like, of course we all want to be rich, but I want to be blessed forever. And so I started like that hashtag thing. It's, it's something I put on Twitter and I do it just every so often. Um, try at least once a day. And that's like a thing like, you know, bless forever, bless forever, bless forever. And hoping that people see it yes. and it is resonate with them and stick out to them. And it's like, you know, being blessed forever. Because that's, I mean, you could be rich forever, but if it's, is that necessarily a blessing when it comes to the being rich forever? So... My whole thought process with that was just being blessed forever. Yeah, I feel you. I feel you. I feel you. And it, it actually rang your tone. Like I said, it's like a daily affirmation. You know, you wake up, you're yeah. blessed forever. Yeah. I understand, like they said, Rick Ross was saying, I'm rich forever. But when you're blessed forever, it comes with a level set of peace. It comes with an understanding. It comes with that. You get the full package. Yeah, you get the yeah. full package. You're not just getting one thing. You ain't getting the money. You ain't just getting the finance. But you're getting your health, your mental stability, and money at the same time. All that included when you said blessed forever. Yeah. And and I love that, you, like you said, you took a, other, a idea that you heard. Then, mm -hmm. you know, you created it and made it yours. And you said, you know what? He said this way. I can say it this way. And you, like you said, you constantly, um, every daily post that. And other folks see it because we actually had a discussion about it in the um, House of Creativity. And um, and you came up and you explained it. I thought it was so amazing. Like I said, you know, you didn't sit there and you said, oh, you know, that's cute and stuff. How can this apply to me? Bless yeah. whatever applies to me. So that's awesome, brother. And that leads to another question. What led you into Clubhouse, man? You know, um, especially you, man. You being, <laughs> you could be anywhere. <laughs> I tell you, you are. What led you into Clubhouse? It was, man, it was during the pandemic. It was during the pandemic when everything was shut down. And that's like when the app was new and my sister told me about it and um, did the invite thing. Cause that's when you only could get an invite to it. And I just jumped on and it was a way to connect with people, you know, cause we couldn't go anywhere. I mean, when you were going places, it was like the essential places, like the grocery store. And, you know, if you had to go to work, work and home and then possibly um, 
you know, restaurants kind of opened a little bit, but you still couldn't sit inside. So there weren't any avenues to kind of connect with people. And I had just released my second book right before all of that started. Like I had had my first book signing for that book and I was going to just hit the ground running, going different places and everything shut down. And so I wanted to kind of share my book with people. I kind of did here and there, but the main thing was just kind of connecting with people and, you know, trying to build some relationships instead of, uh, cause you know, we had events and stuff we could go to where we could network and meet people, but clubhouse was kind of the way to do that, you know, on online. And so, um, I jumped on and was in a couple of rooms for a while. Um, yeah, I've been on clubhouse for a while because I was in, uh, a member of the house of creativity a long time ago and they used to do like a little uh poetry thing on friday nights and stuff oh really? that's when they, that's when there was a lot of people on clubhouse because nobody could go anywhere so you would go into a room and it's like hundreds of people in a room like any room you went in so it was just the pandemic and this would be a good place to connect with people and and, and try to get my message out there and, and expand my audience good got a question so how 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 did it spend your audience did they actually um you know you're on the stage or did it receive your message very well yeah i connected with a lot of people i connected with some uh poets there were a lot of poetry rooms going on at one time a lot of the people kind of disappeared and i did kind of connect with some of them on different platforms like instagram and things like that but it was a good space to connect with other creatives, especially like writers, um, authors. I connected with some people who are authors. And of course, um, you know, everyone in the House of Creativity now connecting with them and being on their platforms. I'm, I'm now on your platform. You know, this is something that we just we talked about on my show and you made it happen. I mean, you big time, you know, got video podcast and still got that blue light. You know, shout out to the blue light, but I mean, <laughs> but it helped me just connect with people. I mean, I've been on um, Val's podcast and speaking of podcasters, man, the way she has her show just laid out so professionally, it's just like that. Uh, uh, she even gave me an idea for my show and I'm just like, man, thank you for giving me the idea, but I'm gonna have to really work to make this happen. But thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Val the voice we call her now Val the global voice Johnson yeah so, yes, yeah, yeah yeah so yeah. Uh, in her show Illulu she was on this last week so those who want to know about Val go and check out um go to my YouTube page uh while you have my YouTube page make sure you subscribe like and share subscribe like and share and be able to um put the we build a community here people what we doing is yeah. we building a community and we want to continue to build it you know with somebody with torrance from torrance um p l moore from the brown sugar cafe who already mentioned that he already won two and now on what your third book am i yes, correct? my your third th book your third book we're going to talk about that third <laughs> book a little bit later so we won't get a little bit more detail so we want y'all need to stick around stay around so we can find out more about this third book you're talking about but man um but um you know i, I want to change this up a little bit because um i found out something a brother from the south from the south um we love good food Oh yeah, uh, I found out from our last the last podcast that we had together that you was a pit master man. Tell me about this journey of being a pit master man. Oh on? man, so grilling and barbecuing is something that I've always loved since I was young, little, pretty much, and I always enjoy going to cookouts and seeing you know. The beginning product and the finished product and then when i got old enough to start grilling myself it's just i mean because i love to cook first and foremost like when i was younger i asked my mother to show me how to cook and i just i just love cooking and love grilling and so it's just i don't know how to describe it man it's like a, a peaceful place for me when i'm out there you know in front of the pit or if i'm smoking something or doing something fast and hot i just i just enjoy the process i enjoy cooking i enjoy trying different things and getting the end result i enjoy trying to create different profiles with whatever i'm grilling maybe using different 
types of charcoals until I find one that I really like, different types of wood chunks to try to get a different flavor. Um, even different sauces. I'm not big on sauces. I, I rather let the, the meat speak for itself. There but you go. That I try. A true <laughs> pit master. A true pit master, brother. That's what right. I'm talking about. But if I use sauces, you know, I, I try different ones. I, if I do use it, I prefer to maybe, you know, toss it later. But yeah, I, I like to come up with like a different blend of seasonings or, you know, some people that have seasonings, seasonings that I've tried. I try to mix and match them just to try to bring different flavors out of the meat. And so it, it's in, an enjoyment to me because, like I said, I love cooking, and it's just another level of cooking for me. Mm. So, 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 what's your specialty, brother? What's your specialty? Man, my my specialty, I would have to say, are wings. Like Ooh. that would probably be my go-to thing is wings. And I've done a lot of different experimenting with different types of wings lately, and I, I feel like I'm just getting started when it comes to wings. See, so you saying is you need somebody to be able to test, and you're doing a whole lot yeah. of testing right now. Um, you know, we can end this. We can end this cast right now. We can end this thing right now, and I can make my way down there to, um, you know, to where you stay. You know, we you know, you know, we can make this happen, brother. You know, what I'm saying just it's just a word, just a phone call away, brother. Word, word. <laughs> Wings. Oh my God, that's my favorite, bro. And I, I'm working on getting delivered from it. I'm working on, you know, saying, you know, <laughs> yeah, so, you yeah. know keep me in prayer. But man, I'm going to have to try. So, so okay. So, all right. So, so what? Okay. Since we're talking about food now, everybody, we in our food segment of our conversation right now. So, what we're going to talk about is the type of season, how he prepared his wings. And um, we had a clip we was in the House of Creativity earlier this week when we were listening to e, um, E.T. the Hip. I'm pretty sure you're talking about the old-fashioned way how they used to do chicken. Was you there to hear that seven? No, I missed that one. Okay, so the seven was about how now we have a microwave side. You know, they said they cooked the chicken the same day. Back in the day, they used to have the chicken. You put it in the buttermilk. You let it sit for two or three days and oh, let them yeah. make the buttermilk, you know, marinate and penetrate that chicken. Then you then you put the season stuff in there. So when you do fry the chicken or whatever it is, it's not just the skin that have flavor, but the meat. Now these days you just put the season on, you know, put the season on the skin and stuff. You throw in the fry, you know, and there's no season and there's no marinade on the meat. How do you prepare your wings so it make it so so good? I, I know it's good because we talking about Terrence P. Elmore. So let's know about that, bro. I always try to marinate. Like I always the best marinating is if you can if you have time overnight it's nothing Ooh. like it um there is different ways you can marinate i know mccormick's has like a marinade different types of marinade that we like and you could marinate like maybe 30 minutes to an hour or whatever but it's nothing like that overnight marinade even if i'm not using the uh actual like marinade sauce per se if I'm just seasoning it and maybe coating with olive oil and season it, if I have time, I try to put it in the refrigerator overnight to let that seasoning and them herbs really get in there. Um, that's important. I think even if you don't have them, if you could do like a couple of minutes in the refrigerator, whatever time you have, that really just, I'm telling you, marinating really takes like anything, even vegetables to a whole nother level. And one thing I couldn't stand growing up and i still can't stand it now it's like when people boil the chicken before they grill it i'm like what it's like well it's gonna take too long so i'm like no no you don't boil like i can tell you're not marinating your chicken if you boiling in it because there you go you you it, it's just it's a whole different taste compared to when you straight up grill the chicken and you boil it now mm -hmm. i have because of time purposes and working with a smaller grill maybe put them in the oven first for a little bit okay but that's 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 way different from boiling yes 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 so yes. you know um marinating is important like i said if you don't have time you could kind of do a couple of minutes or whatever but it really gets the, the seasoning the spices like in the meat like when you bite in you want to have that burst of flavor throughout oh yes Mm, mm, mm. See, y'all guys, y'all just see, he's not just a poet, 
He's not just an author. He's not just a podcaster, but we got a professional grill master that know what he's talking about. And yes, I will be getting on the road and heading <laughs> down to this brother house to sample because he seemed like he needed, you know, I don't want to put all that burden on his wife. So we all, I'm going to go there and, you know, help this brother out, you know, the sample to give him my personal opinion of how the food is. And then, you know what I'm saying, so before he go to market. <laughs> so also, man, you have a podcast for that, too. Tell them people about the podcast that you have um, dealing with your pit master. Oh, man. Um, I actually have a total of three podcasts now I think about it. But it's uh, the Black Smoke Barbecue Pit Master. Uh, it's a podcast with a bunch of us. Uh, it's, it's, it's a good number of us. And we get on there. We you know, talk about grilling and pot, um, grilling, smoking, whatever. It's some fellas that do competition. Uh, it's some fellas that have like catering, some are full time. And it's, it's a really good, really good podcast. Like if you love this, is a great conversation between, you know, some fellas and talking about barbecue, talking about life, um, the black smoke barbecue that's a good podcast i have another podcast i don't think we've ever talked about this but uh, a friend of mine charlie he's actually on a black smoke podcast with me as well he and i have a podcast called past the remote what yeah okay. so that's a podcast that's about tv shows and movies because oh, dude come on yeah yeah because charlie and i we actually did a, another barbecue podcast called the Backyard P Pitmasters Podcast. And every now and then we would talk about movies. And so we kind of merged with the rest of the fellas from Black Smoke and created that. But we still needed something where we could talk about movies and TV shows. So we came up with Past the Remote. So that's another podcast I'm on. Okay, now with past the remote, you said TVs and movies. So, what um, is specific type of movies and TV shows you talk about, or just anything? What's the special? What the um, I guess the niche, or you call it the area of focus? Anything, uh, pretty much whatever we're watching. The I want to say the most frequent thing that we've talked about is um, the TV show The Shy. Mm, okay. I think that's that's one that we've talked about a lot. On uh, cause he has another podcast called the Mavcast, and we've talked about the shy on that as well. But it's pretty much new movies that have come out, our TV shows, shows that we're currently watching, shows that we finished. Um, just whatever we can come up with, especially like I think there was um, uh, what's the name of the show? The um, uh, class I think it was Class of '09. With uh, uh, Brian Tyree Henry, the guy who plays Paperboy on Atlanta, oh, okay, it was uh, okay. um, it was a really good show. That was when we talked about it was on, and um, oh yeah, whatever it comes on, and we like new movies, TV shows, we just discuss it, give our reviews. Sometimes we have spoilers. We try not to. <laughs> um, but Spoiler we, we, warning. Yeah, we give the warnings, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh man, I'm curious. You know, you know, I already expressed I'm a big superhero fan. You know, since I was a child, I was a, a lover of superheroes the Jesse Lee, Spider Man, Amazing Friends, Incredible Hulk, Transformers. My biggest one is Transformers. Oh, yeah. Um, so, um, I'm a lover of those. Um, now since everything is live action and you know what's special with Marvel and DC, um, do you actually do reviews on like, um, for like Disney Plus, like Loki 2 season just came out? Do you do reviews on those? We haven't done a review on Loki 2 yet, but we both of us really love Marvel. So we talk about Marvel movies and things like that. And sometimes it's movies that I've seen first or he's seen first. So we we'll kind of talk about that without trying to give spoilers, but we, we definitely cover Marvel movies. Okay, okay. Well, definitely check out Loki Season 2. This one, they did not do Samuel Jackson any justice in um, Secret Revasions. Um, you know, even though his performance was very good. But it was Loki 2, they, they, they started back up something now. You know, yeah, 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 yeah. I have, think I have surprising. seen the last episode, but we're my wife and I are caught up on it. And it's, it's, oh, oh yeah. I, don't know the, I don't know you saw the episode last night. Spoiler, no, not no yet. Spoiler warning, no spoiler <laughs> warning, nothing like that. But trust me, 
It's mind blowing. I'll be okay, like, okay. Whoa, really? It, you never guess what happened. Put it like that, you'll never guess what happened. Got so it. you definitely need to check that out. So I was glad, man, you did have the you know the um the other shows. And where can the people find the other podcasters? I want to make sure you know you're talking about them. So we want to make people be able to actually find these podcasts as well. Okay, they're available on uh, all podcasting platforms. That's Spotify, Apple Podcasts. And uh, the Brown Sugar Cafe podcast and Pastor Remote, they are just audio podcasts. So you can catch them there. But um, Black Smoke Barbecue is a visual and audio podcast. So you can go check out the um, YouTube page, Black Smoke Barbecue, and you can check it out. Okay. Okay. Wow. Wow. So now y'all people got enough to know about Terrence, you know, about his um, two other books and you know about the podcast and how he's a pit master. So what we're going to do is we're going to take an interlude while we're doing the transition Then we're going to talk about his latest book and, you know, and how it's going to impact your life as well. So everybody stay tuned. I'm going to be back in a second. Hey everybody, this is Jamie Lane, also known as Wise, and I'm going to share something with you real quick. So take this time to actually check this out, this video, and I hope this will be a true blessing to you. Be back in a few. Hello everyone. What is your communication style? If you don't know, I know a program that can help you. If you go to this link, and use this code, AKA WISE, AKA WISE, you'll be able to save 10% on this program that will help you to define your seven life languages. This program is guaranteed to identify you and your ways of communicating so you can be more efficient in your style. Go to this link below and you'll learn more about the program. Thank you. Take care, everyone. We want to thank everybody um, supporting this. We're here to build community. We're not here just to talk, but we want to help people. And these programs are here that help you be a more efficient communicator, you know. And um, the program definitely helped me. Um, it actually allowed me to grow my skills and understanding myself. So definitely take a look at that URL you saw earlier. And the code was AKA Wise. And um, looking forward to be able to partner with other people as we grow this community. Now we're going to go into, like we said, part two with uh, my brother, Terrence P. Elmore. So let's keep the conversation going. My brother, my brother, we back. Now, the latest book that you just released, Pain Is Not Our Only Paintbrush. Where do you, where do you came with the title? What inspired you to actually name your book that and the motivation and the content of it? Can you explain that to the listening artist, brother? Okay, so my first two, first two books were dedicated to love. The second book is called The Essence of Love, which is kind of a continuation, kind of kind of a play off the first book. But I was sitting at my desk one day and just thinking, I was like, I don't really have, like I said earlier, love is not something we really talk about as men. So I don't really have anything for the fellas per se, even though my books are for everybody, but I want to have something like more directed towards us. And so I came up mm -hmm. with that idea. And then the uh, the murder of George Floyd happened. And mm -hmm. like that was it was horrible. Like that was my yes. first time and probably a lot of our first times seeing something like that. I didn't yes. watch the full eight minutes or whatever, but just the portion that I saw. And, then, you know, we're in a pandemic so things are already stressful and so just that had me in a place to where i i just i needed to write to get my my emotions i guess my feelings out i need to write and i wrote this poem called uh familiar fruit which mm -hmm. is a yeah. a version of strange fruit okay and it was 
something that I, after I wrote it, because it took me a while to actually finish it. And after I finished it, I kind of was kind of wondering if I should share it because it. I had like an aha moment when I was just thinking that when it comes to our stories, black stories, everybody seems like they want to hear the the trauma stuff because i mean you see movies it seems like there was like an uptick of like slave movies and Mm -hmm. different things like that and it seems like you know everybody wants to see the the pain everybody wants to see the hurt everybody wants to see the trauma Mm -hmm. and i was like man i don't want to contribute to that even though these were my feelings these were my thoughts i had the aha moment to if I'm going to write poems and share them, I want them to be also a teaching tool and have some sort of hope in it. Mm-hmm. Something to be like, okay, it may be like this, or it may seem like this, but this is how it really is. Or here we are now, but there's, like I said earlier, the light at the end of the tunnel. And so my poem started reshaping to where, because I wrote a poem about gentrification and some other stuff that I didn't include in the book. But I uh, I just just kept writing and it just started developing because I wanted it to be something that everybody can take something from. Everybody can learn something from because I was also thinking, I was like, man, we have a lot of things in the world that can be everybody's story but it's not necessarily coming through the eyes of a black man or a black person period is so i was like i wanted to make my contribution and so my wife and i went to a art exhibit and it was um black american artists and man when i'm telling you that was such a dope exhibit it was so many different types of paintings drawings different types of mixed media all types of different things from black artists across america and just being in there was refreshing and i I was still writing almost finished but not quite finished still writing my book so of course being in there i got really inspired and my wife put together a reel and i thought of a poem to go with it And in the poem, I said that pain is not our only paintbrush because, Mm -hmm. you know, we have all these other beautiful stories and different canvases to show people and show the world. So pain is not our only paintbrush. And so I I put that in there and it still didn't click yet. And then I was looking at the poem. I was like, I'm going to put this poem in the book. And so I kind of reworked the poem a a little bit and I was like, that's it. That one line in there, pain is not our only paintbrush. I said, that's going to be the title of my book. So that's where that came from. Awesome, man. And it's really, really profound. Pain is not our only paintbrush. It because, like you said, with social media, um, with um, news media, with magazines and interviews and just what they put out there, it just show us as a people always in pain or dealing with pain. But you know what? We have accomplished so much in this yeah. world by itself. And you just highlight in that point, like you say again, taking the charge. You know, the man in the mirror. You look at yourself and say, what can I do to attribute here? And that's so such an amazing, amazing, amazing story that you have. You know what? I can do my part. I can create a book and put this information out there for others and like you say even with your wife you partner up with your wife and work with her on this as well so it's just a beautiful beautiful story man and um it just like i said by you just talking to you encouraged me because like i said i'm writing my book almost finished when i talked to you i think i was like at chapter one <laughs> chapter yeah. one yeah. <laughs> now yeah. i just finished chapter nine as of last oh night. yeah goal was oh, congratulations yeah. And, um, I, I got 10 chapters I'm working on. So I'm, I might go ahead and try to finish up 10 tonight. 
and then you we'll got my it, writing yeah. coach. Thank you, man. You know, <laughs> you got well, it. Well, I know I got a writing coach in Monique Lisa Johnson. Yeah, I mean, you know, her, she's a playwright. You know, what she so out the portal, what uh, I think five times, and all. So you know, I got somebody in my corner that you know is just motivating, keep me on task, and um, so I'm looking forward to releasing this book. Um, also, like I said, to encourage others through my journey in life and through the, I guess you say, the challenges that you know there is hope there's peace and yeah. there's love and your book is a definitely a, the title by itself explains that and um so what so i guess i would say other than your wife i know your wife is a big trip in your life who else inspires you who else that you know motivates you to be able to be so creative like this to write a book that you just released oh man i i give all honor and praise to god i mean without him i'm i'm nothing like these yeah it's coming from me but he's he's the source like if it wasn't for him i wouldn't be able to write i wouldn't be able to do any of these things and it's something that i recognize as a gift being able to write and be able to just put things on paper and inspire people and so i We have to use our gifts. We have to use our gifts to try to make the world a better place. Like I said, I always have this saying, I like to say that I'm spreading love in a world that seems to be full of hate and heavy on the scenes because it's not full of hate. Yeah, there's hate in the world, but it's not full of it. And so like everything I do, you know, because God is love. So love is always at the root of anything that I'm doing. And so without him, I mean, yeah, I, I'm just so thankful for the opportunity to be able to write. And, you know, I said I, I need to share my things with people because we talk about things a lot and we talk about things we don't like. And what are we doing about it? It's like it just takes a little bit to change a lot. And if you can do something to give a little bit of hope or spread some sunshine somewhere or brighten up somebody day that makes a a very strong impact because you have people who by you encouraging them and uplifting them they can carry that on to somebody else and encourage and inspire and, and uplift them and so i just i feel like i just have to share my writing i can't keep this to myself i mean i did it for a long time you know, have my little book of poetry and things like that. Some of the books I can't even find, but um, oh, you okay know, now, okay. Not hey, right I now. just you might want, you might, <laughs> might want to, you know, what I'm saying that's a collection right there, man. You know, oh, some some stuff. some of the stuff I was in middle school. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, we'll let you go on that. That's that. That's that. Yeah. Uh, middle school love right there. Okay, we we'll let that. Yeah, go. <laughs> so it's like I just feel the need to write stuff and share it with people. Because I feel like somebody is going to see it and it's going to help somebody along the way. And like with this book, I just really felt the need to show levels of hope and inspiration through like through the eyes of a black man. Because the media will tell you that we're all these negative things and we're not. Mm -hmm. The media will tell you that us in general are all these negative things that we're not. And I wanted, especially like young black boys and young black girls to see that they're not what people are trying to tell them they are. They're not these stereotypes. And no matter the environment that you grow up in, no matter what you're exposed to, you can change that and you can turn that around and you can make it into a positive thing. Yeah, and you're right. You're right. And like you said, you could turn around and make it a positive thing. It's up to you. We have to make the choice that we can make a change. What happened if we complain and we try to receive what the world gives us? Yeah. But actually, what it is, you can impact your own environment by based off what you believe was the core values inside of you. So, with that being said, in the House of Creativity today, that was a question asked: What is success to you? Can you explain on this platform what is success to you? That's something that changes with me a lot um because it can be so many different things so i guess to express them all is 
success to me is at the end of the day, being pleased with something that you've done, being not content, but being pleased with something you've done. And it's enough to make you proud, but at the same time, it's enough to let you know that you have a lot more to do. That's what success is to me if I had to kind of narrow it down. Oh, good, bro. Good. So this is a follow up question. So when you you're, uh, when you are prepared to leave this earth, how do you want the world remember you? Oh, I want them to remember that I wanted to make sure that everybody is okay. That's something that I it's been a while since I posted that on Facebook. That's something that I would kind of throw out there like. At the end of the day, I just want everybody to be the best version of itself. I want everybody to be okay. And I like to say I'm doing a pretty good job of that. Like anybody who knows me know that that's my thing. Like I want everybody to be okay. I want everybody to be their best. I want everybody to not settle because I feel like we will never live long enough to actually see our full potential. And with that thought in mind, we should always just keep pushing forward. That's another thing I like to put like a hashtag on thing. Keep pushing forward. Mm -hmm. Like just keep pushing forward because like I said, we, I don't think we ever could live long enough because our possibilities are endless. And sometimes we trick ourselves in believing that we can't do certain things, but we can, like we can do anything like something as simple as tying our shoestrings it was difficult when we did it at first, right? Yes. Yes. Some of us probably got yeah. frustrated and, you know, upset, but you can do it with your eyes closed now. <laughs> it's yes. like not even a thought. And so it's like, just keep going at it. Just keep doing it. Keep improving yourself. Keep bettering yourself. And then when you're doing that, help somebody else do the same thing. So that's what I would say people would remember me as is just being somebody who wants to help somebody be the best version of themselves and encouraging you to do the same with every other people. Cause I feel like you should leave people better than you found them. Like if you, somebody comes into your space or into your area and they're not doing so well, or they're feeling down on themselves or having negative thoughts, I feel like it's our job to, leave them better than the way we found them give them some sort of hope some sort of encouragement just being in our presence oh man that's 24 karat um 24 karat gold bars just drop right there 24 karat gold bars drop hope everybody was picking those up because that's amazing you want people to be better than what when you met them and how did they leave you so that's awesome bro Man, we appreciate you, every man. Now, now, a couple of things because you you a multi talented person. <laughs> so, what we're gonna do is you're gonna let people know where they can find you, where they can find your books, especially your latest book, and know uh, where they can go to get and purchase this and be able to support you with that. So, that's the first question. That after you answer that one, I'm gonna ask you another one. Okay, so my website is thebrownsugarcafe.blog. And you can purchase all of my books there. Just go to the shop button. Um, of course, my books are available on Amazon, but you really want to get them from me because for one, you get them autographed and they're coming straight from me. Um, what else? I'm on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and YouTube at the Brown Sugar Cafe. Also with uh, my barbecue, it's uh, tdub.bbq. As T is in Tom, D is in David, U, B is in boy, B is in boy, dot BBQ. And that's Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, and YouTube. Awesome. And of course, my podcast, I said earlier, they're available on all podcast platforms. That's cool. And um, so you mentioned the barbecue. Now, now with this barbecue, did you just get a chance to see you or did you get a chance to go and find, find a place where they can sample some of that good cooking, bro? <laughs> It's just content right now. It's That's content. actually something. Uh, mouth watering right. content. That's what you're doing. <laughs> mouth watering content. Everybody, if you want your mouth to be watering, just go ahead and just connect with Terrence T. Elmore. He's going to make you hungry. <laughs> and, hey, look, I make them simple. I'm going to start putting like some instructions in it, but I make them simple. Like I kind of lay out all the ingredients. So 
I'm trying to encourage you to, you know, to try to make your own too. Oh yeah, you got me encouraged. We already had that. We already had that conversation. So you know, what I'm saying so. You know, what I'm saying we. You know, I ain't gonna. I ain't gonna. I ain't gonna put on this live platform where we talked about. You know, we talked about in private. What else you can do? You know, what I'm saying you got another market that you can tap into. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. yeah, that's a good idea too. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, what I'm saying I mean, I mean seriously, tap into yeah. that man. You know, we come from the house of creativity. So you know, yeah. what I'm saying so we understand that. Terrence, man, it's been awesome. One more question. One more question for you and this is related to sports you are a big sports fan oh yeah so what is your favorite sport and why right naturally it's basketball i love basketball i used to play basketball um it's been a while since i played basketball but that's my favorite sport i guess growing up seeing and we talked about this before yes. like seeing magic johnson and seeing michael jordan i mean Watching those two made everybody want to play basketball. And I just, I don't know. I just love that. Like, like, like I said, I love all sports, man. I'm like a true sports fanatic. Like if any type of sport is on TV, I'll watch it. I even watched um, the Cornhole Tournament. You serious, man? Yeah. Seriously. I love, I love sports, man. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not one of those people who, <laughs> and I don't discriminate. Like I watch women's sports too. I know some guys don't watch women's sports, man, but. I watch women's sports as well. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, that's that's stuff, professional, yeah. Uh, college, you know, yep. I'm just, I just love sports, but I would have to say basketball would be my, my favorite, my first love. Okay. Who's your favorite team? Uh, So because I like Magic Johnson and because I like Michael Jordan, my, I have two favorite teams and that's the Bulls and the Lakers. Okay. I don't okay. I don't talk about the Lakers too much because LeBron is on the team and I'm I don't <laughs> want to sound like one of those bandwagon fans. <laughs> but you know, Lakers and Bulls. Uh so we, we share the same thing. We um I'm a Laker fan. I was back in Showtime. I'm back in the A yeah. division with Magic them with Kareem and with Magic joined the team. They won the championship the first year. So I, I was in love with the Lakers ever since. My favorite basketball player is Michael Jordan because the stuff he did, the will to win, you never see that. You know, the closest thing to that was Kobe, God bless his soul. Yeah. But yeah. the will to win and you know, at almost at all costs. That's the reason why I love watching yeah, Jordan. Yeah. Jordan had that killer instinct. That's yes, the sir. thing that that I think really separates him from uh, LeBron and he, Kobe had it too. But Jordan just had that that win mentality. Like that's what made him a great player. It wasn't so much the stats, even though he had some really good stats. But I don't think we ever see anybody retire, play baseball, and come back and win three more wing rings. I don't think there we you ever go. No, you won't see that. You won't see that. You, you know, Le, you know, LeBron got his thing. Okay, yeah, he you does. Know, he got his thing. But you know, when it comes down to it, when the rubber hit the road, yeah, that, you know, Jordan, I'm telling you, Michael Jordan is the man. So he, and he did he it changed, all on the same team. All on the same team. <laughs> he changed. He changed culture. You know, what I'm saying yeah. yes, he changed everything. He changed the sneaker, the sneaker game, the he outfit still game, sell it. Oh, and still selling. <laughs> <laughs> man it's been awesome to talk to you terrence man we're gonna do this again man and yeah i appreciate I, you for, have, for having me on man and i, I just want to say again I, i'm proud of you how you you took an idea and you not only ran with it you jumped leaped and hurdled you have you go live it's not like a pre-recorded show you go live and you have video man so i'm very very proud of you but thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Like I said, I learned from the best. You are one of the masters in this game. You know, that's no joke. You know, slide about it because you do this, you do this, and you do an awesome job. Oh, man, Even it. with your podcast right now, you in season, but uh, season three? Season your three. Podcast? Season it's three. off to a slow start, but I'm in season three. <laughs> See, <laughs> but you know what? You're doing the thing, and you keep yeah. on doing it, and it's got its value content. Even when you do a blog or yourself, even when you talk to somebody, you gain something from the message, what you actually do. You live true to the core values that's inside of you and your message is what it is. It's uplifting and empowering, not just for just for um, black men, not for black women, it's for everybody. If yeah. you really listen to the core of it, you everybody can get something from it. So it's amazing to be with Terrence. P. Elmore, the Brown Sugar Cafe. And brother, we're going to talk a lot more. And I thank you for the support. But like I said, I wouldn't even start it unless you reached out and said, hey, I'll let you be on my podcast. And that Ashley, we talked about the game of divorce, divorce for the name Jay Malane, also known as Wise. So we thank you, sir. No, we I appreciate thank you. you. 
All right, we can go ahead and wrap this show up, and um, we'll do this real quick. Everyone, we just want to thank you for coming out today and supporting um, Terrence P. Elmore at the Brown Sugar Cafe and his book out there. Go to his website. Go to and follow him. Go to all his social media pages and connect with his brother. He's doing amazing things. And like I said, um, pain is not our only paintbrush. Yeah, we have a story. We got a story of hope and light out there that we can share to the world each and every one of us and i'm thankful for him because it gave me an opportunity to actually promote my book which is coming out real soon people it will be out real soon the book is entitled where and it did well stay of being it talk, it take you from the life journey where i've been through and where i'm at now and um it's also going to be a blessing to me and other people as well so we are so thankful for everybody who came to support this so like subscribe share this with other people you know you know, um, we have been the community here. That's going to be a blessing for many other people. And so until next time, for another Wise Going Live at 5, we'll see you next time. Take care, everybody. Have a wonderful weekend. Take care. Peace.